Uh, this president has taken on some things that no other president in history has taken on. He may speak softly, and he looks soft to some, but uh, he's a tough man. He represents our country as a dignified, highly respected man in the presidency. From the beginning, the American president has been the chief of state, the commander in chief, an educator, and the planner of the nation's future. But in our first century as a nation, the job was less complicated. Mr. Lincoln ran the executive branch of the government with only two secretaries. And if you wanted to meet with the president, you just went over to the White House and stood on the stairway until he came by. Today, the American chief of state is an international figure. The office has a powerful effect upon the United States and upon the whole world. There is nothing nine to five about it. Moving frequently into the world of international diplomacy, it is critically important that President Carter know in detail exactly what is coming up. He's a person who keeps his mind and his attention on, on the real questions of policy, of purpose, of objective, of values, in a whole range of some of the toughest problems that any president has ever faced. Although we have not achieved all we had hoped in the 14 months since the last summit conference in London, I share the feelings that were expressed there in a very heartfelt way. This will be the fourth economic summit conference, and I approach it with optimism. He was the first president of the United States whom the Japanese people felt they could trust without any reservations whatsoever. Because they said to me, President Carter speaks to us as if we were his equal. Never before had any president of the United States done that. This sense of trust in Jimmy Carter was shared by Prime Minister O'Hara, and the two men proved that high office and great distance are not bars to human warmth. Not long after their first meeting, the president flew to Japan on a sad mission to attend Mr. O'Hara's funeral. He came as chief of state, but also as a friend. The president's quiet manner and deep understanding make it possible for him to have, on the one hand, a cordial relationship with Pope John Paul II, the head of nearly 600 million Catholics around the world, and also to work constructively with the leader of the People's Republic of China. The American chief of state must understand the art of creating new relationships and healing old wounds. He brought the Jew and the Arab together for the first time in 2,500 years. Nobody in 2,500 years was able to do it. He's kept peace, at least for the time being. It's not a perfect arrangement, but there's never been a hope for peace as good as the one he's produced. One of the things I've noticed about President Carter is that when he gets people together, he appeals to the best instincts in each of them. He appeals to uh, the hope, the faith, the future. He makes each of us feel like a better person for having sat and talked with him. I think Jimmy Carter has provided a, a steady, responsible kind of leadership. The responsibility never ends. Even at the end of a long working day, there is usually another cable addressed to the chief of state from the other side of the world, where the sun is shining and something is happening. It's no easy task to have a continuing good effect upon America and the whole world. But that's what this job is all about. <laughs>